Hi again. I thought I'd do another uh, video on the uh, Hot Wheels Collectibles series, um, which was a line of models that Hot Wheels did around about 20 years ago. Um, they did, well, obviously, the usual 164 scale models, was for, for the most part. They were the forerunners of the Hot Wheels premium car culture models we, we know of today. But they did dabble in some 143rd scale models, um, something Hot Wheels is certainly not um, associated with. I managed to pick up a few when I was in America um, around about 20 years ago. Um, to my knowledge, they weren't ever exported to the UK. Um, I never saw them in the UK. I, the, the, all the ones I've got here, I managed to source in places like Target and uh, Walmart when I was out there. And um, I think they were a very short-lived series. Um, I certainly don't think they released more than... I think I've got five models. I think there was another two in the series, which I don't have. Um, and I think that was it. I think they were, they were gone by about 2002, 2003. But, um, yeah, interesting line. Um, quite nice models. They're not up to the, the standards of modern 143rd scale model. But then, you know, the price point wasn't that high. They were really kind of a, um, a slightly up, a slight upgrade from the um, standard Hot Wheels, um, really just like 143rd scales of the Hot Wheels premiums, really. But all the same, some nice models released. Um, we're looking at now the 1966 Shelby GT350, of course, which is a, a highly tuned Mustang um, done by Carroll Shelby. This um, the sixty six version features the little um, window behind the door. Uh, sixty five version didn't have that. Also, I think the sixty five version was uh, had aluminium panels and was basically a more hardcore sort of race vehicle. I think for sixty six they saved a bit of money and made it slightly more street friendly. Um, but yeah, very nice model. Um, opening bonnet, as you can see, there's a detailed engine in there. Once again, uh, being a card collector, I've uh, kept these boxes sealed all these years. Um, and I, I will keep it that way, so unfortunately I won't be opening these boxes up for you. But um, you, can, you can clearly see the models. Um, for some reason it seems to feature a NASCAR-style uh, window net, which uh, I have no idea why that's there, but um, there you go. Um, I believe this model also came in white, which is the normal colour for the... Um, for the Shelby's, um, so it's quite unusual to have a red one with the white, uh, white, de white detailing. So um, yeah, that's the first one, the the Shelby GT three fifty. A second one is something a little bit different. So again, another Ford, a nineteen fifty five F one hundred, I believe this would be a pickup truck, uh, nicely customised in a beautiful shade of. Um, pearlescent mauve again with the opening bonnet and detailed engine uh, yeah very nice model eh? this um, they all came with little dioramas behind this seems to be a sort of sunset scene uh, yeah very nice model for truck collectors of course trucks very popular in the states so I guess this probably had uh, you know, quite a following but uh, yeah very nice model all the same uh, let's say a beautiful beautiful paint job very nice. That's probably the nicest paint job I've seen on this series. So yeah, that's the Ford F100 pickup from 1955. The next one is another muscle car. This is the first one I saw and kind of basically turned me on to this series. Beautiful 1971 Plymouth GTX. Doesn't say whether it has a Hemi engine in it or not, but um, Let's hope it does. But yeah, slightly raked, slightly jacked up at the rear to make it yeah, a slightly sort of street rod version, um, which, which you'd expect from Hot Wheels, really. Again, opening bonnet with the detailed engine and a quite attractive sort of colourful diorama behind it. Finished in uh, a lovely metallic emerald green. Um, I think it also came in orange. I never saw that one, but I've seen pictures on, online of it. Um, yeah, a very nice model. That's a beautiful car, of course, and actually a, a pretty good rendition of it, uh, to be honest. Uh, comes, of course, with what looks like uh, Craigar mags on there. 
So yeah, I think we can take it. It, it could be a Hemi, uh, a slightly uh, modded version of it. But um, yeah, really nice model that one. My favourite from the series without, without a doubt. Extremely good. Hope that appeals to anybody out there who's watching this who's a, a muscle car fan or a Mopar fan even. So yeah, that's the um, that's the 1971 Plymouth GTX. The fourth one in the series, in fact, looks like a slightly uprated, updated version of a Hot Wheels mainline. They did a, a 32 Ford hot rod in the in the mainline series, and this could well be the 143rd scale Big Brother of it. Um, nice car, finished in. A nice uh, shade of red there with um, Hot Rod Magazine branding um, associated with it, which we have seen, of course, on the uh, the 164 Hot Wheels collectible sets. There was, uh, I think, at least one which was a uh, Hot Rod Magazine branded set. So this, I guess, would go um, go with those. But yeah, very nice model. Um, probably. Not perhaps my least favourite of the set, but having said that, it is nice and it, it makes a nice nice part of the set. So yeah, that's the 32 Ford Hot Rod. And the last one in, in the set is another Ford van, or another Ford. It's a slight um, variation from the pickup. I think it uses the same body casting with a different back end attached to it. So you can see there's a line around the door there where they basically uh, attached the, the van rear section as opposed to the, the pickup rear section. But yeah, very cool that one. Um, Joe's Speed Shop low, uh, branding on the side there. So yeah, presumably it's Joe's uh, shop van in metallic gold. So featuring the same style wheels as um, as the pickup truck, um, but yeah, very nice. That's a pretty cool vehicle. Opening hood or bonnet uh, and detailed engine. So yeah, very nice. Make they make these make a nice unusual um, diversion from Hot Wheels normal one sixty four scale vehicles. Uh, as I say, they were they were. I had trouble finding them originally when I was in the states. I only saw them in a couple of uh, outlets, and they seem to have disappeared without a trace. So um, maybe this might bring back some memories for a few collectors who remember seeing these in the shops, uh, you know, around twenty odd years ago. Uh, if not, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, happy hunting, and I'll catch you in the next video.